Yo gané, I think you'd almost argue, as you said, looking back at the last thousand years with the technological advances and the way that people think and, and how, you know, some people call it a quickening. You could look at it as the overall frequency of everything is starting to finally go up and go up and go up. And, uh, and there are some that would argue that even internally, that's what you need to do is, is tune into, quote, higher frequencies in order to get to the next level. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Suzanne, you've been holding on for a while from Ontario. Hi, Suzanne. You're on with Yogani. We may have to stop you um, in the middle of an answer to take a break, but we'll go ahead and start, okay? Okay. Hi. Thanks. Um, I'm a Kundalini yoga instructor, and I've had a few different teachers. I can uh, relate to what Yogi says, Yogani says about um, finding different teachers. But I guess my struggle sometimes is where I'm just, I have a rebellious nature, so sometimes I go against what, uh, I have a couple of different teachers that I listen to. I, I kind of go against what they say, because I do believe you have to go inside and follow your heart. But where... I, I struggle sometimes because I'm thinking, geez, is this still this rebellious part of me, or do I need to follow my heart or submit? Well, um, thank you. And uh, I think, I think in all, inside all of us we have a resonance with what we feel is true and what we feel isn't. And um, I, I understand where you're coming from, you know, and, and maybe – What's happening is, is the part of you that's resonating is taking in what's coming from whatever teaching, uh, you know, you're speaking of, and then the part of you that's not is saying no, thank you, <laughs> and I think that's perfectly legitimate. Um, I do not believe that we should be blind, you know, blindly following a teacher ever, you know, and uh, that's one of the reasons I don't ever want to be up on a pedestal in that role because. I think uh, there's as much bad that comes out as good. But we do need teachers. We need dedicated teachers. We need gurus. But we also need very uh, discriminating students, if you will. And you need to take what's good and what works for you. And if it doesn't work for you, and you or if you know it's wrong, just leave it behind. Leave it behind. Take what take. Take what you need and leave the rest. And you can do that at Advanced Yoga Practices with an S.com. Yogani's with us. If you'd like to join in the conversation, 877-345-3779, 877-345-3779, or locally, 749-1360. We are taking donations to Virtues First tonight, trying to make sure that we can keep this program going. If you'd like to make a donation, uh, the address is 11130 Kenwood Road, Cincinnati 45242. Take a break. Be back with more of Yogani and Yoga, the other 98% on 1360 WSAI, the revolution of talk radio. Welcome back to Yoga, the other 98%. And uh, Scott mentioned before, this is, this is brought to you by Virtues First. Um, Virtues First is a nonprofit organization uh, which. Um, looks at the other 98% of yoga that is often overlooked. Uh, virtues is, is, a, is a huge part of yoga. And in yoga, it's called yamas and niyamas. Virtues is kind of a different word we're using, but uh, you can think of eth ethics or do's and don'ts. And uh, it's, the it's the foundation of yoga. And if you don't, it, it, a lot of these uh, it, uh, practices that we do in yoga, sometimes it, it could be like, um, you know, some of these practices are, are really intense. And if you're not ready for them, is, is, as I've heard it put, is, is can be like kind of kicking in the door. So you have to have your life kind of in order, you know, living a, a, a good life and, and having your... Uh, and now, of course, the, these practices also help you put things in order as well. But uh, having um, an eye for your, your the way you're living your life, your virtues and your ethics and so forth, these are the first two limbs in Patanjali's uh, eight-limbed yoga uh, under yamas and niyamas. It's like, again, it's like do's and don'ts. So these are the you know foundations of, of a deeper practice, and so uh, we have this nonprofit called Virtues First, and it, it involves uh, Virtues Project. If you want to check out virtuesproject.com, it's, it's a great way of, uh, of virtues as a means of like self analysis, taking virtues inward, and also how to apply those to others and spiritual companioning with virtues and calling each other up to a virtue rather than speaking down to one another. And so the other things that we have going on with uh, Virtues First is the Karma Yoga Projects. These are selfless service projects. And uh, one thing we have is this, is this show, and uh, we hope to keep it going. Uh, but uh, it really is going to start depending more and more on your own karma yoga and your own selfless service and, and charity, which is another uh, form of yoga or another uh, aspect of yoga. And 
Um, so if you're interested in keeping this show going and also interested in, in, in helping out with some of the other Virtues First projects, for instance, um, we have, we're providing a yogic and virtues-based education to some children in India at a school in Chandigarh, India, which these kids ordinarily wouldn't have any schooling at all or, or it would be really difficult on the entire family if they did. So we're offering a, a free school to children in India in Chandigarh. So that's another project that you would be helping to support by uh, helping fund Virtues First. And if you'd like to donate to Virtues First, the, the uh, address is uh, 11130 Kenwood Road in Cincinnati, Ohio at 45242. So if you like, uh, like the sound of that and you want to keep these things going and you're looking for a good project, this is the one. So we're uh, going to get back to Yogani now. Um, where do we leave off, Scott? Uh, we took some calls, and then uh, we said we're going to go back to the beginning. You said that deep meditation is uh, is a great place to start. And in, in your mind, does it all start with I am? Well, it can if you're following the AYP teachings. But, <laughs> but first I'd like to say, uh, Will, that's some wonderful work you're doing there, and I really applaud you for it. Um, it's a crew of us. It's not just and, me. <laughs> and, uh, well, all of you there. Um, and uh, I'm glad you mentioned the eight limbs of yoga, too, because... Um, uh, you know, there are millions and millions of people out there that are practicing yoga postures. And uh, yoga postures represent one out of the eight limbs of yoga. And you mentioned two of the other ones, the, uh, the restraints and the observances in conduct. Uh, but besides that, we have breathing techniques, meditation, uh, a very advanced practice called Samyama, which involves moving inner silence out into our daily activity, which is very enriching, and uh, and some other things as well. It's uh, you know some physical and some non-physical. So yoga is a lot more than yoga postures. And what I tell people is, if you'd like to go beyond the relaxation that yoga postures gives you so well, uh, look to the other seven limbs and you'll be just totally amazed that's what we call the other 98 <laughs> percent yeah i guess it's not exactly 98 percent but it's uh, you know seven out of eight that's a lot yeah <laughs> uh, but uh yeah meditation and i am scott that's that's uh that's where it starts in ayp it's a very simple practice uh, that takes you deep into yourself very easily effortlessly and then from there a whole lot of other things can happen uh as as is pretty well described in the novel uh, that uh, that I uh, wrote and published a couple of years ago. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, The Secrets of Wilder is the name of the novel, and uh, and in the in it, the character of uh, Mr. Wilder um, gets tapped on his breastbone, almost like somebody striking a gong, and uh, and the teacher who strikes him on the chest just says, "I am," and it is. It's almost like a gong that starts resonating inside of him. Um, was that an experience that was real for you? Is it semi-autobiographical, or was just that a nice way to uh, dramatize uh, well, the, the tap, idea? Well, the tap on the chest uh, is a metaphor uh, because we don't. Uh, that's not necessary in the, in the the way that that I teach. Although in some traditions there is physical touching involved, uh, which is another whole area of transmission of energy. Uh, but we don't do that in AYP. Uh, if you start meditating with the I am mantra, you, you're on. Yeah, what I tell people is, is the first time you sit to meditate, you've been tapped from the inside. Mm. Okay. Uh, so that's that's how it works. And um, I wanted to mention that uh, the AdvancedYogaPractices.com site is a free site, and it has over 300 lessons there including lessons in meditation, uh, spinal breathing, pranayama, which is a very advanced breathing technique that's very easy to do, just like the meditation, and a whole bunch of other techniques available for free on the site in a very logical, laid-out fashion, or at least that's what they tell me. I just, <laughs> I just wrote it like mad for a couple of years, and uh, it seems to be working pretty well for a lot of people. And then we took those lessons and expanded them uh, into a large textbook. And I say we because the textbook, Advanced Yoga Practices, Easy Lessons for Ecstatic Living, that came out a couple of years ago, involves the lessons that I gave on the website and a lot of Q&As from hundreds of people all over the world. Uh, and it's really a terrific uh, sequence of learning that involves not just one person, 
writing it all down, but uh, interactions with many other people.